Hello all and welcome to my channel, Judy's Creations in Crochet. Today is May the 11th, 2023. Um, I want to say hello to all of um, my loyal followers and I want to welcome anybody that may be new to this channel. Uh, I hope you enjoy what you see and that you come back and spend a little more time with us. I like to focus on finished objects and the acquisition of hand dyed yarns. I focus a little more on Canadian indie dyers than I do on American, but I have both. Um, as it says, I am all about crochet, but we have lots of knitters in our group as well. And once a month, I do a cal, be it C-A-L or K-A-L, using the flower of the month as inspiration. So if you aren't familiar with that, please check my other videos. You will see the very first of May, the um, flower lily of the valley that we are using for this month's inspiration and i like having as many people as possible join in and at the end of the month we do a slideshow of all of your work i don't have um i have a cat wandering around here i don't have as much to share with you today but um We'll get started. First of all, um, generally finished objects is something I have crocheted, but I'm adding this week because some of you like to see this. Um, and I have mentioned in the past that I used to make dichroic glass um, fused jewelry. And here is one piece I have made, a necklace and the earrings. They aren't exactly matching, but they are the same color. And um, I just love the way dichroic glass sparkles. Now, I mentioned I don't have as much to share with you today, and that's because we are finally, yay, finally into the garden. Haven't done a lot. It was still cool at the end of the week, but now it is starting to get warmer. And I did spend a day and a bit doing um, the beginning, the preparation of getting into the garden. But I do have one finished crochet item to show you, and that is what's on my model here. And it is, I'll take it off so you can see the whole thing. I did show you part of it when I started. It is a um, asymmetrical triangle. Starts out small. It's uh, not a difficult pattern. I couldn't show it to you until now because I was a tester for this pattern. And it's called the Valley Vista shawl and it can be found on Ravelry and it will um when is it I think it was Tuesday that she released the pattern so I'll be able to link the pattern in the description box below and you can see this is a fair size, partly because I added to it. I have not blocked it. I didn't really feel, it wasn't curling or anything. I didn't feel a need to block it. I don't like blocking if I don't have to. And I will show you the yarn that I used. She did uh, kind of request, if we could, that we use one of Lion Brand's bamboo, like Trubu and Nubu, while I used... Trabu Sparkle, and it is 56% hmm, rayon from bamboo, and sorry, that's 96, 96, kind of hard, very small print, and 4% polyester, and this is what I had left from three balls. 
Um, the pattern only called for two and a half, but I had a little extra, so I put more on it. And I think I used the hook size they recommend, which is, I think it's a four. And it has 195 yards in one ball. And like I said, it calls for uh, two, and a, two and a half, maybe. But like I said, I used almost a third, uh, a third ball. So that has just been released this week. And like I said, it was a very easy pattern to do. Great for beginners. And an interesting thing is because somehow in the conversation, oh, I know, I ask when I could show it because I have a YouTube channel. And uh, a week ago, she got in touch with me and she said, Judy, would you like to give a special code to your viewers so that they can get a discount on this pattern? I said, well, that is very nice of you if you'd like to do that. So she has given me a code that starts today, uh, April, what did I say? April the 11th, and it goes to the end of May. So if you would like to get this pattern, it's only on this pattern. Now, she does have other patterns, and all but one of them are knit, knit patterns. So if you're a knitter, you might want to go and check her out, see what else she has. And the um, I will put it in the description box below, but it's very simple. If you put in the code Judy, you're going to get it for, I think she said 20% off. But I'll look up the specifics and I will post the link to it and the um, special code and what it's good for and the dates. I will put it all in the description box below. So that's my one finished object to be able to show you when it comes to crochet. I'll move that out of here. Now, I have been working on a few things. Um, I almost had three things on the go, but I stopped myself from starting the third. But I do have two items on the go. And this one, I can only show you if you remember, this is my yarn for the April, no, we're in May. This is my yarn for the May cow, Lilies of the Valley. And I was just at a point where I did a color change and back. So I was able to bring this down to show you. And I am using a Furls Hook 3.5. That is almost finished. I would have finished it, but I decided I needed to start something else so I had something to show you. And um, I think that uh, before the weekend, I'll be done that one. But I won't be able to show it to you for a couple more weeks. So in the meantime, I decided to pick up some Kaboo. And here is the Kaboo. I am using and I've shown you this the last couple of times and Kaboo is 50% cotton and 50% rayon from bamboo I have this in two colors I started with this one there are 232 yards or 212 meters in a ball I had five balls and I was a little worried it wouldn't be enough. So I ordered another one in this color and the magenta that I'm going to use. And it turns out I'm not going to need that extra, extra ball. But anyway, better safe than sorry. So what am I making? I started on a tank. As you know, I have mentioned a few times that Jackie from Crochet HD and Lenan from Nina's Knots Crochet are running a cow called Tanks and Teas 2023, which goes through May and June. <coughs> they suggest, <coughs> excuse me, I have a tickle. They suggest the Ren Tank and the Ren Tea. You can get them free from um, her website or her blog or you can purchase them on Ravelry. 
And this is how far I am. I'm doing the tank and I am <coughs> not following it 100%. I'll tell you how what's happened. But I am on the second side. Tonight I will finish up to the shoulder and then uh, I have a feeling that I made the shoulder a little bit too long, but I'll finish and then I'll check. I, I like mine to be up like about there. So I have a feeling I can take some rows out of the side. We'll see. I think part of it is it's, it's heavy and it hangs. It really hangs down. Um, now I want to tell you all that happened in doing this. First of all, <coughs> Let me take a drink. If you're not familiar with Kabo, the first thing I want to tell you about it is it splits. And it splits a little more than I like. So at times I get a little frustrated with it. Not to say I can't work with it, not to say I won't finish this. And I have one other, as I said, um, five pack of the magenta with the intention to make another tank. It'll be a different pattern. And I will use it because I have it and I do love the color of both of these. Um, but personally, I won't be ordering Kabo again to work with. It's just a little too much splitty for me. So this starts at the bottom and it is basically a moss stitch using the extended single crochet. Now, I like the ex extended single crochet. I have used it before. Usually though, with a heavier yarn, probably it was a worsted. Might have been a DK, but I think it was a worsted. And I made a cocoon uh, cardigan with it. And I like the stitch. I can't say I'm partial to the stitch in a moss situation. It uh, is a little more open. Um, but my real problem with this, and I don't know if it's my tension or the yarn or the instructions, but she says to do whatever number. I, I went to my size and I'm kind of between sizes. So I look at a large and I look at an extra large and I it says this many or that many and I go halfway in between. It's not that hard that I can adjust things because it, it's just straight rows back and forth. And it says to use a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So I get started. I know I am very loose and sloppy when it comes to chain stitches. I don't know about the rest of you, but I never like my chain row. But otherwise, um, I suspect I am a little, I'm never really sure because I don't do swatches. We had a big debate on, on uh, the live last week with Jackie and Lynn Um when I use some very expensive yarn, I may do swatch, but I didn't swatch this. And I think I might do a little loose. But anyway, I did the in between the two sizes that generally are where I fit. And I did the chain row and I thought, man, this is a mess and this is a big chain, but it'll tighten up when I put the next row in. So I started partway back the next row or did I finish the next row? And I looked at it and big. I don't know. It was even going to, it could have fit probably a 3X. It was so big using the number that was between large and X large. So I said, well, this isn't going to work. I don't even, it's not that it was wide. It was that it was big and loose. It had way more space between the stitches than what I want. Now that to me is comfortable. And that's the way her her shirt looks or her tank or her tee looks in the pictures. So I said, well, I gotta take this all out and um, I'm going down. And so I went down in hook size to, 
Can you see that? I went down to a 4.5. This is my Leto hook. I only have a few of those. I would like to get more of them. I have to say, as much as I love my furls, I like this hook even more. It's a little bit longer. Um, I don't know. It's got a, a better point on the tip. But the creator of this, who um, had an Etsy shop, lives in the Ukraine. So, you know, right now, he's not doing anything. But when he ever gets back in business, I will buy some more of these Leto hooks. I love them. But anyway, enough said about that. I changed from the 5.5 that she mentions to a 4.5. Now, interesting, Kaboo says to use a 4 millimeter. And I'm thinking, hmm, 4 millimeter is what you're supposed to use with this yarn. And look at how it's untwisting there. Can you see? It's untwisting there. At the beginning of this uh, cake, I had to cut some off because it was all untwisted. Anyway, she said five and a half. They said four. I decided I'd try four and a half. And the four and a half is working for me. And this time I chained and started the number I thought between the two sizes. And it's working out just fine. I maybe could have done just the large, but I think this is going to be okay. So that's the uh, some of the problems I encountered with this. And I, um, I'm kind of doing my own thing at the neck because I don't think I want it quite as um, deep or wide as she said. But it was looking really good. And I started the second half. And now I see that it is longer than it needs to be. And I think that's because this is heavy and it stretches. So I'm going to be taking some length out of that. I think we're almost at the perfect length on, on this side right here. So that's what I've been working on. Two different projects this week. And I will likely have both of these finished next for next week although you'll only get to see one of them and um, I'll get started on something else that I can show you as a work in progress um, but remember I'm out in the garden now so I'm not getting quite as much done um, for the next probably two weeks until the uh, May 2-4 weekend it's actually um, Victoria Day is Monday, May the 22nd. So that's two more four full weeks. I'll be busy and then I'll be back to normal, hopefully. So, but I do have some acquisitions and a couple other things to tell you about. And I first want to tell you about some yarn. I was ready to show you some of the yarn that I keep saying is piled on the table back there. And I had one to show you, and then I got an order in the mail this week, so I thought, oh, well, I'll do that. I want to tell you what happened. I um, I don't know how many of you watch Gary at Urban Yarn, but I was watching him, a video he put out, oh, maybe two weeks ago, and he, I think, had received this yarn in his happy mail package I don't think he ordered it himself if I recall correctly but anyway he received some yarn from a company called Arcane Fibers and Arcane Fibers is in um, Manitoba I I have the city but you're not gonna know where it is anyway Manitoba the province beside British Columbia and um, I liked the yarn he showed it was pretty and he talked about what nice um, color work it was and how he did such an excellent job of um, matching the yarn to the inspiration picture yes I said he you know most of the dyers not all but a large percentage of the dyers are women but this is uh, run by a man and so I went to the site to see because he was talking about how gorgeous the inspiration pictures were and what a good dye job he did. And I looked at the site and he was right. I mean, he had, I guess I, 
I might say he had some unusual combinations. Yes, he had my kind of colors, but he had other um, combinations that really spoke to, spoke to me and I wanted to get them. I wanted to get them all. Um, I probably had six or eight into my cart and I said, whoa, 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 you know, you're on a bit of a budget here. So let's pull back. And besides, before I order a lot from one company, I really want to kind of test the waters because you know what happened there before I got what I thought would be nice and I get it and it wasn't, it was rough, not smooth. So I wanted to test them out to see if they were as soft as I like because I compare everything to my favorite Ravenswood. So I made an order. I actually had an email back and forth with him about a couple other things. He only really does one base. He does it in three different weights. Did he have a lace? He might have had a Surrey alpaca too. I can't remember. But basically he does a merino nylon blend and he does it in fingering DK and worsted. And you can choose. <laughs> so um, I asked if he had any other weights or would be doing them. He said no. Also doesn't matter Canada or US, if you order two or more skeins, you get free shipping. So I said, okay, well, I'll get two, I'll get three. Three is typical. And uh, I was, and it was here. It arrived, uh, it arrived Monday, very quickly, a little faster than some. And lo and behold, Monday night, I happened to be online and there's a notification from Crystal. I'm sure lots of you watch Crystal Bag O' Day. She had just made an order from Arcane Fiber. First time ever. I thought, what a coincidence. But I know she watches Gary too, as they are good friends. So here I am. If you've watched Crystal, you've already heard about Arcane Fiber Works. And I'm going to show you. But my colors are totally different than Crystal's. I stayed to my own um, color preferences. But now that I've seen the work he does, I will order more. And I will go to some of those other colors that really called to me to give a try. So here is their logo. Arcane Fiber Works. And I will link them in the description box below. All, as I said before, these are all Merino Nylon Blend 80-20, 400 meters or 435 yards. Pretty uh, consistent with most that's out there. Um, I think they were 32 or 33 Canadian. Of course, it'll be different in, in whatever currency you have. This one is called Love is in the Air, and here it is. And the one thing I can say, even there on the screen, it looks a little more vibrant than my actual skein. And the pictures look a little more vibrant than my actual skein. But I am very, very happy with, you can tell, colors that I would love. I almost think I should get a second one and make a shawl with two of these or I'll have to put something with it. And if I can get a purple that matches, I would. So that's the first one I got. Now, here's my test. Um, I haven't unwound it. I know it won't be as tight and it'll be softer, but even wound up tight like it is, it is a nice softness. A little nicer than average, I would say. You can see the strands, they're plump. They aren't real tight, thin. You can see the twist, but it's not bumpy. This gets a good rating from me. As for an actual number rating, I'm not gonna say, but it would be in the upper end of yarns that I like, and I will be getting more. <clears throat> I got two more. The next one, same specs. This one is called Whispering Lilac. 
this is no black or gray in it. This is more purple, light, more muted, and blues. Again, a little lighter than that last one. Again, you can see at the end the nice plump strands. It feels good. I know I'm going to enjoy working with it. I'm wondering, too busy to put the two of them together? Maybe not. Maybe not. And finally, the third one I got is more to the lavender and pink. And this is called Serene Oasis. Serene Oasis. And I love this color too. I love all three of them. I think this might be my favorite of the three because a little more vibrant. And then this one. They're all pretty, though. I like them all. I am happy with the colors. I'm happy with the feel. And this is a company I'm going to put on my list of will reorder. In fact, because there were several I really wanted and I put back that were totally different colors, um, Gary showed one that was, I think it was called something like Back to My Roots. And it had nature colors like trees, greens, and browns, and grays or black. I mean, it was really a beautiful color, and I wouldn't mind it. So I think I may double check on this. Now, I know you're thinking, well, you're, you're really focusing on Canadian dyers. Well, I have mentioned why. Exchange rate now is so awful. I, I know that shipping isn't great, and I accept that I have to pay it. Um, since pandemic has pretty much come to a close, not completely, the customs is hitting us more. During pandemic, high pandemic, they didn't stop anything at customs for us to pay on. Now it's, uh, it's hit and miss about every other one. So that's an extra expense. <clears throat> and then the exchange rate. When it's like 42%, I'm not buying U.S. any more than I have to. I still buy some, but it's limited. Like EFA, I still buy that. But, you know, for the Americans in the group, the, buying Canadian is to me a bonus for you especially when he says buy two and you get free shipping even to the US so you don't have to worry about shipping the price of this is is well crystal said it was 24 or 25 dollars in US currency that's what it worked out to for her it'll it'll vary from day to day depending on what the exchange rate is but <clears throat> That's a pretty good rate because if you buy the same thing, well, if you do a merino nylon blended EFA, it's about 25. Some of their others are 30, though. So just so you know, and you can see, I just want to keep you informed and educate you. If I know a lot of you don't buy hand-dyed yarn, but if you did, I had one of my viewers tell me after watching this, she decided to treat herself and try a hand-dyed yarn. And she's Canadian. She's in Ontario. And she has ordered something. And I think by my telling you my um, reactions to it, it might help you in making a choice if you decide you're going to spend a little money to get a uh, more luxurious yarn. So that's that. Now, same day, it was like Christmas for me on Monday. Same day, I got my May Arkansas subscription package. Um, they never disappoint. But I want to tell you something first before I show you the yarn. It always comes with a few goodies. And one of the things it came with was this information. They have a fiber weekend. I think it is it's geared to both knitting and crochet. And it is in, oh, there it is, Lake de Grey Resort. Now, I would love to attend something like this. But as you can imagine, me flying from here to there, it's a little bit expensive. I believe, oh, here's the date, September the 7th to the 10th. 
So uh, I think you arrive on a Thursday, and they have some Thursday evening, Friday, Saturday um, events planned. They have Sunday morning breakfast, and then you would leave on Sunday. So if this is something that appeals to you. I just wanted to mention it. Uh, some of you that may live a little closer to Arkansas might want to try this. Take in a weekend. Um, they have a sunset stitching cruise on Saturday night. You get a goodie bag with it. There are classes if you wish. They tell you how many meals and all of that. And you would go to, here's their address, ArkansasYarnCompany.com. And right on their main page, you'll see a link to have a look at this. And by the way, the goodie bag will have some hand-dyed yarn in it. So I just want to mention it. It's a fiber retreat. Everything you need for a cozy break from the everyday. So there is information I'm passing on to you. One day in the future, maybe I'll go to something like this. But right now, I'm not ready to fly down to Arkansas, which I assume this place is in Arkansas. So what did I get in my goodie bag? Uh, well, a number of things. Some tea. As you know, I'm not a tea drinker, but this is wild raspberry hibiscus, and I put it in my box of giveaways, and somebody will get that. I'm not sure if I'll have a place to plant these or not, but I got a package of seeds, and these are all the type of seeds that would bring butterflies. It calls them butterfly attractant. And by the way, the theme this month is you make my heart flutter. You make my heart flutter. And so there's the seeds, and then I got a butterfly sticker. Uh, matches my other butterfly up there. I might stick it up there somewhere. And then I got, now, one day maybe I will take up knitting. I do find, even though more and more the um, local yarn stores and the dyers are thinking about us crocheters, but they still are predominantly into knitting, so you get these knitting. I got two of these, can't get that one out of the bag. It's kind of rubbery, it's a butterfly, and it has a hole in it. It's, I think they call it a needle minder. Put your needles, I guess you put your needles in and the, and the stitches won't come off when you're not using them. I haven't decided if I will put these in my giveaway box or, Keep them for the day that I just might take up knitting. I'll keep them for a little while, and if I don't get any closer to knitting, I, I'll give them away. Of course, I don't know always which of you are knitters and which aren't. And as always, we got some uh, stitch markers. There's always one from, in the shape of Arkansas. It has butterflies on it, and this one is crystal clear. And then we get an extra, another stitch marker, and this is a green butterfly. Ties in with my May green. So I definitely, one day I'm going to get something that I can put all stitch markers on, and I want to put all the Arkansas stitch markers on it. I don't know about the others, we'll see. Give me some ideas, How? what do I put them on? And finally, the yarn, and as you know, I get the sparkle version, and it's called, You Make My Heart Flutter, Yummy Sparkle, and here we are. This has so many colors in it. So there's a rusty red, some yellow, some green, uh, turquoise or aqua, purple. Down here we get turquoise pink into a peachy, peachy orange color. 
Um, the other one looks slightly different, but very similar. And having two of these means that I'm able to make a full shawl. See the speckling in it as well? Black speckles there. I don't know if those are black or purple speckles happening there. Um, oh, here in the... Yeah, it must be black speckles throughout because that's black in the green and aqua. And it really... It is yummy because it feels so soft. And it's just merino nylon, 7515 plus 10 Stellina. But it is very, it's a little softer than the other one I showed you today. This is soft. This ranks up with Arkansas. I keep wondering if I should change from getting this sparkle and start getting just the plain base. But the sparkle is always so very, very pretty. I'm not sure if I want to give up the sparkle yet. But I haven't been disappointed yet in their colors. But there it is. This month. And of course, just today, I get... Your, your subscription is about to renew. It's always ready to renew. And they charge me this week ready for it to go out. It actually went out a day before the first of the month. I guess it depends what day of the week and if they have them dyed and ready to go. But once again, it's called Yummy Sparkle and this yarn is definitely yummy. So, so something else I wanna, or oh, two things I wanna tell you about. I meant to tell you last week, but I'm gonna mention it in passing. I'll bring it up again next week. I have decided once again, that I need to do a major, 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 it's, I'm emphasizing it, de-stashing. Part of the reason is I um, need space for these yarns when they come in. And you could say, well, Judy, just stop buying yarn. And I could stop buying yarn. But I have come to enjoy showing you yarn. And I also enjoy the search to find new companies um, that I don't know to see what their yarn is like. And of course, some of it I'm not as happy with, so I don't need to keep it. And um, yes, I need to make space, but I also feel some desire to continue showing you yarn. So I need to make space for it. And, uh, and to be honest, it gets expensive buying all this yarn. So I have the yarn sitting there. I'm not using it. Why not sell it? And that'll help me um, make a little bit to pay for this. Because you know the yarn that I buy to show you, the yarn that I give away, the, ex the shipping. Um, I spent $24 last week to ship a prize. It's all coming out of my pocket. And I will not ever be monetizing this channel. So I think I'm going to sell a bunch of yarn that's sitting there as much as I like it all. Last time I just de-stashed things that I wasn't as keen on. This time I'm de-stashing because I will never get to it all. I'm not young. I'm never going to get to it all in my lifetime. So I'm going to have to make some decisions and de-stash. So probably... At the 1st of June, when I get done the gardening, I will come on and show so many um, cakes or hanks of yarn each week and see if anybody's interested in. It'll be basically half price. <clears throat> so that's one thing I wanted to remember to tell you I didn't tell you last week. <coughs> the other thing is, um, I have been looking for um, advent calendars for Christmas. <clears throat> yeah, I'm preparing way ahead. Who wants to think about Christmas? It's only May. We've be barely gotten rid of this winter weather. I don't know if it's gone yet or not. And we're thinking summer. Why are you thinking winter? Well, I've already seen a couple of companies who have been listing. I didn't realize they were a lot of them were listing them already. 
and I saw a couple on Instagram just yesterday and I went to look for further information and they were already sold out. So I don't want to just take luck of the draw when I'm ready to buy them. And by the way, buying them now spreads it out. And I have already purchased a couple. I'm pretty excited about the ones I have purchased and I will tell you more about them later. But um, I'm really excited about one that I found that I didn't think about. Don't know why I didn't think about it. But I wanted to tip this up a bit so you can see the picture better. These yarns right here. Somebody says, when are you going to use them? Somebody else said to me, no, no, those make a really nice backdrop. Just leave them. <laughs> anyway, you know how they are so beautiful and they're silky. And... That person did a wonderful job of doing a gradient set in my choice of colors. And by luck, I'm going to do more on Instagram because that's where I found it. The person that made these is doing another advent calendar for this coming Christmas. And she shows her sort of color palette and... It really, really draws me. And I could do the same. I could get the same base I got last year. She is doing a silk version. But what I didn't do last year and I was interested in is she's also doing a version with yak. And so I am going to get it. I'm waiting a week or so to the next budget month. Um... But I'm going to get her yarns in yak for Christmas. And I know they're going to be gorgeous looking at her pictures and knowing what she did with these. So that is something very exciting to look forward to. So I just wanted to mention that that is in the plans. She is in the UK, I remember, and she did a... She was the one that did the really classy box and everything in it so i know she's gonna do a good job all the other ones that i'm getting are canadian dyers and i'll tell you more about those in the coming weeks i did break down and get one out of canada because i know the quality of her work so i'm looking forward to that so that's all i have to show you i try i guess i stretched it out enough <laughs> to make a complete um, video out of it and I am going to finish the tank top I'm going to finish um, my April item and uh, April it's May Judy it's May I'm going to finish my May uh, object for the crochet along both in the next week and probably start I think I want to start another tank top but I got two or three other things in mind um, by the way, I appreciated everybody's concern when I mentioned, do you ever have one of those days you don't know what to do, da-da-da-da-da. I, I appreciate your concern. I appreciate knowing that some of you have the same kind of day. I do want to emphasize, I had not lost my crojo. I really wanted to crochet. I just was frustrated at not knowing which project to do next. And that happens to me too often because I have too much yarn and too many patterns. I'm never sure what the next thing should be. I have so many things I want to do and accomplish. So it'll be interesting to see what I finally decide is going to be my next project after I finish the two that are on the hook right now. So in the meantime, happy hooking. <laughs>